What'll happen to the Yellowstone Ranch? That's a question that's basically been the focal point of Paramount's epic western, Yellowstone, for as long as anyone can remember. When the series first premiered in 2018, we were introduced to the Dutton family and their many, many enemies. Everyone wanted ownership of the largest ranch in Montana. But it was the Duttons to keep. Or was it? Season 5's Part 2, that's the finale is drawing closer and closer. This means that the answer to the long-awaited question is also drawing near. Unfortunately, John Dutton isn't going to be the one answering it. He's effectively out of the running, but not because anything happened to the character on the show. Oh no, John Dutton might or might not be alive and well. It all depends on the direction series creator Taylor Sheridan is willing to take. Why the ambiguity surrounding the show's leading character? Simple. The character who played him, that's Kevin Costner, made the shocking announcement back in 2022 that he will not play the Dutton family patriarch any longer. What happened? What led to this startling announcement? Why didn't anyone try to stop him? And what are the conditions for his return? That's what we're here to talk about. Did Yellowstone save Kevin Costner's career? He needs no introduction. Hollywood's leading man for several decades now, Kevin Costner, is one of the most talented and recognizable actors out there. He's had a series of hits that have gained him international recognition along with several millions to his name. Costner's a great actor, and there are no two ways about it. We recently got to see how amazing he is on the small screen with his starring role on Yellowstone. However, did anyone ever consider that the Western saved his career? We might have to go a little back here. Costner gained prominence in Hollywood as the star to look out for in 1981 when he debuted. His career trajectory only went up from there with one hit after another. The Untouchables, No Way Out, Field of Dreams, Dances with Wolves, and who could ever forget The Bodyguard? Sure, between his debut in 1981 and when his career really took a nosedive in 1995, Costner did star in a few movies that didn't fare all too well. Robin Hood, The Prince of Thieves was a commercial failure even though Costner had poured a lot of his money into production. Critics weren't too thrilled with Costner's portrayal of the acclaimed fictional character. However, he more than made up for it when he starred in The Bodyguard, reclaiming his A-lister status. Once you star in a critical and commercial hit such as The Bodyguard, you've essentially cemented your status in Hollywood as a star actor. Costner had fortunately shown tremendous potential as an actor by the time Waterworld and The Postman were released in the late 90s. To put their failures into perspective, they've consistently been listed as the worst movies of all time. Waterworld might have actually had a fighting chance, to be fair. The reason why the film flopped wasn't necessarily because of the acting or the direction, but the fact that they poured in too much money to make the movie happen. Again, Costner had paid out of pocket to make the movie a reality. While Waterworld wasn't panned by critics, it wasn't that well liked either. In fact, even the people who enjoyed the movie claimed that it felt a little dragged. The Postman was a different story altogether. In fact, it almost ended Costner's career. The movie was panned by critics and reportedly hated by everyone in theaters. In 1997, when The Postman was released, Costner had hyped up the movie in press tours as one of the best storylines ever. He truly did believe that because he'd also taken up the role as director, financer, and leading man for the film only to lose almost everything when the movie made virtually nothing. It did win five awards, however, that is, if you consider the Golden Raspberries awards. The film won for Worst Picture, Worst Actor, and Worst Director for Costner. Not really something that would go on the actor's mantle. Everything was wrong with The Postman. The critics believed that even Costner's acting couldn't save the train wreck. The film did so poorly that many people refused to work with the actor because of it. Costner's career eventually made a comeback in the 2000s. After all, he was a great actor. The only problem now was that he gained a sort of reputation for being difficult to work with. 
Circling back to Robin Hood, Costner wasn't the first pick for the role. In fact, when he was offered the role, it came with a lot of liberties because he had higher star power. The crew was just happy to have him on board, and if that meant doing whatever he wanted, they were okay with it. It didn't help much that Costner was also financing the film. So while Costner was the leading man, he also got a seat at the director's table. Reportedly, he made several changes to the script over and over again. The final version of the film was nothing like the first draft. In hindsight, the original director should have followed his gut because Costner's edit flopped big time. Likewise, Costner had a reported screaming match with the crew of For Love of the Game because he wouldn't accept a role as solely the leading actor. Costner has always wanted more control over the direction his projects go in. Yes, sometimes it's worked out well for him and he's been able to create a masterpiece. More often than not, however, it just doesn't work. But Costner refuses to accept that. So by the time Yellowstone was offered to the actor, he'd built sort of a reputation for himself and wasn't working on as many projects because of it. His career had taken several hits over the years and he could really do with a project that was bigger than anything anyone had ever seen. A project like Yellowstone, of course. So in 2018, Costner made the best decision for his career since The Bodyguard and redeemed himself from the worst decision he'd ever made, which was to turn down Shawshank Redemption to focus on movies we've never heard of. John Dutton now became one of Kevin Costner's biggest roles and he was earning millions per episode of The Paramount Show. Everything was going good until one day when Costner decided it was time to up and leave. The real reason Kevin Costner wanted to leave. Was leaving Yellowstone the biggest career mistake Costner had made since The Postman? No, it was actually a bigger mistake, and you'll know why when you hear the real reason why he quit the show that revived his career. So we have to go back here to late 2022 when the rumor mill reported tensions on the set of the Western. Remembering Costner's tendency to steamroll direction, he'd reportedly butted heads with Taylor more than just a few times. Sometimes Costner's vision was artistic and made sense for the show, other times it simply didn't. More than anything, however, Yellowstone had always been a pet project for Taylor. He claimed that he'd never let anyone else take away from a show he'd worked so hard on. Not just the writing and direction, but Taylor had reportedly been working with production houses for years before Paramount eventually signed the show. He'd been working on Sons of Anarchy as an actor when he had the idea for the epic western. Speaking of which, Taylor doesn't really have the fondest memories of his time on the small screen. He'd rather spend his time working behind the camera than in front of it. In any case, Yellowstone was a dream come true for the series creator who had been rejected by several media houses until season one was finally ready in 2018. It was a gamble for Taylor who poured his blood, sweat and tears into the show, but it was one that paid off in millions if we're specific. Catching up to 2022, it was reported that Costner wanted more creative control over Yellowstone or at least over his character, John Dutton. Unfortunately for him, John was Taylor's brainchild and also the moneymaker. If there was one thing Taylor wasn't willing to do, it was to give Costner complete control over his creation. So you'd think that the reason why Costner walked off set never to return was because of an all too familiar Hollywood scenario, right? Well, that was reportedly one of several reasons that contributed to Costner's decision to ultimately walk away. The way the rumor goes is that Paramount did try to intervene between Costner and Taylor and work out a compromise. They couldn't do the show without Taylor, who owned it, and they also didn't want to tank ratings by having Costner walk away. The compromise was to give Costner some creative control, and apparently Taylor agreed to it too. Then why did the actor leave? Again, there were more than just a few reasons why things didn't work out. Besides asking for more creative liberties, Costner was also asking for more money from the show. You have to remember that the actor was the leading man and an acclaimed legend in his own right. This meant that whatever anyone else on the show was making, Costner was making thrice that. There was no way Paramount could have anyone matches per episode salary, much less raise Costner's own income any further. 
So that's what led to the breakdown in negotiations. Costner wanted more of everything, creative control and money. He wasn't willing to compromise on either, and if he wasn't given what he was asking for, he'd walk. In the end, that's exactly what he did. He walked away from the show that revived his career. In hindsight, it might have been one of the biggest mistakes he's ever made. However, if you were to believe yet a third source here, it was something that Costner had to do. Not necessarily wanted to do. Here's the thing. Costner and his wife of almost a decade, Christine Baumgartner, separated sometime in 2022 and were officially divorced in 2024. And yes, it had a lot to do with Yellowstone. Christine is the mother of three of Costner's kids. The couple were reportedly thriving until one day, reports suggested that Christine had given Costner an ultimatum. He'd been spending a lot of time away from the family in Montana to shoot for Yellowstone. He'd be gone for months on end and Christine was at her wit's end. She'd experienced this before with Costner fully immersing himself into a project and not coming home. So she made him choose. Costner made the decision to prioritize his personal life over his professional career to save his marriage. Unfortunately for him, the marriage was no longer salvageable and Christine officially filed for divorce sometime later. As of right now, the couple are divorced after a lengthy and contentious court battle over child support and alimony. The pair have, however, moved on. Christine's dating a former friend of the family and a neighbor, while Costner's been seen around private islands with a socialite. All's well that ends well, right? But what if we said there's a fourth possibility on why Costner left Yellowstone and this is the one that makes the most sense? All the ways Horizon failed. Taylor might have irked Costner with his rigidness, and Paramount might have gotten off on the wrong foot with the actor when they refused to renegotiate his salary. Christine wanting to end their marriage definitely didn't help. Yet it seems like the real reason why Kevin Costner upped and left the set of Yellowstone was to follow a passion project of his, one that was a long time in the making. To preface, we have to go back to the late 90s when Kevin first started his hand out at directing and producing. Now, historically, passion projects haven't worked out well for the star, with Waterworld and The Postman both being movies he's poured his heart, soul, and cash flow into. But Horizon was going to be different. At least, that's what Costner told himself. The epic western film had been in the works for decades by the time it was eventually picked up. So, for anyone out there thinking that Kevin stole the idea from Taylor, <laughs> you'd be wrong. Horizon's timeline predates Yellowstone's. Yes, however, if you were to say that Costner got inspired by Taylor to restart his passion project, that wouldn't be too far off from the truth. Anyway, fans believe that the real reason why Kevin just wasn't interested in being John Dutton anymore was because he got a sweeter deal elsewhere. Horizon had been in the making for decades with the script planned out and everything. All Kevin needed was a production house to sign off on it. There had been a few deals along the way, but nothing ever materialized. That's why when the film was finally picked up, Costner wanted to devote his all to it. Yep, that meant walking away from the Yellowstone Ranch. Now, before we talk about how the first part of the movie has fared in cinemas and how critics are reacting to it, let's talk a little more about Horizon. The format is similar to Yellowstone in only one respect and that's the fact that they're both westerns. Horizon is based on the events that led to the Civil War, the Civil War itself, and what happened after it. As such, it's not a standalone movie and will have a few parts to it. Officially, it's been greenlit for four, but some reports suggest that there might just be three parts in total. Dividing the movie in parts was probably an idea Kevin picked up on after the disaster that was Waterworld. Again, the movie didn't do badly because it was a bad film per se, it was just too long to sit through. The audience was apparently bored by the time the movie reached its plot and many walked away without watching all of it. Horizon, since it follows an actual historical timeline, had to be broken down. Another thing about Horizon is that Costner's doing basically <laughs> everything. He's starring in the movies, he's written them, or at least co-wrote the script. He's also the director and the producer, plus he's poured in his money to get it off the ground. It's been a long time coming for the Hollywood legend and in 2024, his dreams finally came true when Horizon was released. This would be the part where we tell you how it's been panned by critics and audiences alike. The biggest complaint was that Horizon lacked the storyline and direction that's needed to keep a western moving. 
In not so many words, many critics called the film boring. Costner's acting might just have been the only saving grace, but that still didn't change the fact that the movie was a box office bomb. Horizon wasn't cheap either. The movie had an extensive budget and Costner and the rest of the team is currently scrambling to at least break even. A major issue with the film could have also been the timing of it all. You have to remember that 2024 was the year some phenomenal films were released, and in the mix of it all, no one really sat down to watch Costner's new western. No one except fans of John Dutton, of course. It goes without saying that while some people watched the movie to support Costner, others wanted to see what Costner left Yellowstone for. This was supposed to be a project bigger than Yellowstone, something that would help fans understand the logic behind Kevin Costner walking away from the biggest Western hit since forever. And it didn't. So now we know the real reason why Costner left his role as the patriarch of the Dutton family and how that gamble didn't pay off. It's time to talk about the fact that Kevin's been regretting that decision ever since and even reached out to Taylor to ask for his job back. What did Taylor have to say? Kevin Costner eventually changed his mind. Taylor Sheridan didn't. Now, Yellowstone has had to deal with more than just a few setbacks of his own, by the way. Besides the obvious fact that they had to navigate the show without their leading man, they were also facing multiple delays. Yellowstone is a big budget production, and this was set to be the final season of the show. Naturally, it takes time to make things happen. Now, typically, it's taken Paramount almost a year, if not a little more, to come out with a season of Yellowstone. This time, fans were hoping Taylor and the rest of the team would fast-track everything, given how we're only talking about the remaining half of Season 5. However, the finale was repeatedly delayed. After announcing that the finale would be released in late 2023, the date was pushed back to the middle of 2024 following the writer's strike and then pushed back to late 2024 because of scheduling conflicts. For a while there, some fans were worried that Yellowstone might not see its finale being released ever. But not to worry, it is happening and the finale has been wrapped up. Many fans were hoping that Kevin Costner would make a surprise return in the finale or the final episode at least stumping fans who thought he'd left the show for good. This was rumored to have been the big reveal at the end of the show, and many people held on to hope that their favorite character would be returning to the small screen one last time. Unfortunately for them, that's not going to happen. Taylor isn't being coy or secretive here. He's made it clear in no uncertain terms that Kevin will not be in the finale. This was something he'd originally made clear to the star when he walked away from the project, and then later to his reps when they reached out to express the actor's interest in returning. Starting with why Kevin wanted to come back, according to the actor himself, he wanted to come back to give John Dutton the proper send-off that he deserved. The actor acknowledged that he might have made a rash decision when he ended his contract with Paramount right before the finale and wanted to work with the team to reach some level of a compromise. Kevin didn't mention Horizon tanking, but fans believe that maybe that had something to do with his decision too. Probably a lot more than he's willing to admit. In any case, here's why Taylor didn't want him back. To start off, many fans theorized that the series creator probably has bad blood with Kevin and isn't willing to let him back on the show. This could be true, but Paramount did release its own statement at the time when Costner walked away, saying that there was no bad blood between the two of them. Taylor has mentioned in interviews that while he wasn't thrilled with the fact that the leading actor was walking away, he learned to be fine with it after all. Which brings us to the second reason why he might not want Kevin back. The series finale was written in a way that just didn't involve Costner anymore. According to a few actor interviews, Yellowstone probably has the best ending in the history of television. That's a bold statement to make in itself, and an even bolder one when you remember that the show is navigating without its leading man now. But that's just how the actors and Taylor feel. By the time Kevin had asked to come back on the show, they'd already written the script and were working on the show without John Dutton. Incorporating him in the finale somehow now would have meant an even further delay. Paramount wasn't willing to foot the bill for that, and Taylor wasn't willing to rewrite his script for a third time. That's right, Taylor had already written Season 5's entire storyline by the time John Dutton announced his retirement from the show. Now, the question is, will it be worth it? Will the finale be worth watching without John Dutton? 
Some fans were worried that Taylor had just ruined the show when he refused to let Kevin Costner return. But others believed that John Dutton's exit was the best thing that could have ever happened to Yellowstone. There's a reason for this. Many believed that Yellowstone's storyline had been dragged out to no end just because Taylor wasn't ready to say goodbye to the parent series. Yellowstone started off as a series, but has now grown into a whole franchise with several prequels and sequels. The show is actually on its way to announcing more sequels, one with Matthew McConaughey on its way coming shortly after the finale airs. While everyone's a fan of Yellowstone, and its spin-offs have done quite well for themselves too, where does Taylor plan on drawing the line? That was a question many fans had when they started to feel like the series creator just wasn't ready to end the western. Many fans were worried that Taylor would drag the show out to the point that it became boring. And that's when Yellowstone would have ruined the tremendous legacy it's built for itself. It was a warranted concern, and one that it seemed like everyone except Taylor and Paramount had. You have to remember that Yellowstone has been a long time coming for Taylor, and it is, in effect, Paramount's cash cow. Neither of them were ready to say goodbye. Reportedly, Taylor had enough material ready that would have seen a couple of more seasons of the show go through. And while everyone agrees that Taylor has a way with a script, they also started to feel like the story was drawing to an inevitable end. How many more foes would the Dutton family have to fight against in every season? Many predicted that the final boss would be someone from the Dutton family itself. And that's exactly what we came to realize at the end of Season 5's Part 1, when Jamie Dutton flipped the switch and started yearning for the family ranch. Jamie's character arc had been one of the more interesting ones on the show, as fans saw him go from a character who wanted nothing more than John's love and approval, to someone who could do just fine without it. If anything, he was willing to get all the Duttons out of the way to get to the family ranch. Another storyline and character arc that was almost as fun to watch progress as Jamie's was Beth's. The two characters rivaled each other throughout the series and were fan favorites for almost every season. In fact, in the final episode of Season 5's Part 1, we see the two coming face to face with one another for the first time since they were young, and the incident happened. So while John Dutton might not be a part of the finale, maybe that's a good thing. Kevin Costner's exit has given the other characters time to shine in the spotlight too. Besides that, it'd be interesting to see the sort of closing Taylor whips up for the best western anyone's seen in a long, long time. Will Kevin's absence be felt? Of course, he led the show for five whole seasons, but maybe this was for the better. We'll know more once the finale officially drops on November 10th, 2024. What do you think is coming up in the final episode of Yellowstone? Who do you think gets the ranch? Let us know in the comments and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.